The pedal steel is one of the most unusual instruments in the world. You need to use both pedals and knee levers to play one, as well as plucking the strings and sliding a metal bar called the steel. Although it is most known for its role in country music, the instrument's history can be traced back to Hawaii, where the pedalless lap steel was invented in the 1800s. While Nashville remains the epicenter of the pedal steel community, the pedal steel sound became a distinctive component of juju music in Nigeria in the late 1970s. Hey guys, welcome to Songtown. In this video, I'll be talking about the instrument's accent to prominence in Lagos and how it made its way into juju music. Let's start with the pedal steel's history and how it got to Africa. The Hawaiian steel guitar is commonly, though not definitely, credited to Joseph Kekuku as its creator. When Kekuku was 11 years old in 1855, he picked up a boat while walking along a railroad and slid it on the strings of his guitar, producing a rough version of what would become the lap steel sound. Kekuku departed Hawaii in 1904 for the United States and subsequently Europe, where his Birds of Paradise tour was a huge hit and inspired two Hollywood pictures. His popularity, together with the itinerant Hawaii tent shows, helped to popularize the steel guitar sound among non-Hawaiians. Only few of the recordings of Kekuku exist today, but his influence may be heard in the work of other early Hawaiian steel musicians. Many steel players in the 1970s would be surprised to hear the instruments played by a man who had developed his own distinctive technique in a style far far from Dolly Parton's albums. The first time pedal steel was heard on a juju song was on King Sonny Addis' Synchro Chapter 1 in 1977. Demola Adekoju was credited as playing the album's Hawaiian guitar. The non-pedal steel was Demola's first exposure. He was in Lagos, Nigeria, where he resided. And then he heard a recording of Hawaiian music in which the non-pedal steel was used. And he said to himself, I want to learn to play that instrument. He said he combed the port because Lagos is a port city and he asked sailors if any of them had a Hawaiian guitar. Someone eventually brought it for him and he purchased it. He secretly taught himself a few licks and he was playing in an amateur band. Demola's band was in a music competition one day but they were having a really bad day. He thought of how to turn their fortune around. Then one thing came to his mind, his secret weapon the Hawaiian guitar. So he dashed home, grabbed his lap steel and began playing a few licks on his Hawaiian guitar with no pedal. Nobody has ever heard anything like that in that place. It sounded really good. As a result, they were victorious in the battle of the bands. After some time, someone told Sonny Ade about Demola and his Hawaiian guitar. Then Demola was invited. Sonny Ade gave him a try and he was really impressed. He loved the sound of the instruments and immediately added Demola to his band. Before Demola was taken to Sonny Ade, he had already been recommended to Sonny Ade's competitor, Ebenezer Obey, but he declined the idea of the Hawaiian guitar in his music at the time. He eventually added the instrument to his music after hearing it on Sonny Ade's album. Ebenezer Obi and Sonny Ade were the two most prominent juju leaders in Nigeria at the time. And they were bitter rivals according to popular belief during that period which was later debunked by both of them. Both Obi and Ade experimented with new instruments to differentiate their styles, including fender rods and synthesizers. Ade took a bet on Demola and went to England to purchase two pedal steel guitars which he then brought back to Nigeria for Demola to play. Ade also sought to recreate the traditional Nigerian violin or Guji's sliding sound, which he thought was absent from Juju music. As a result, pedal steel was a perfect fit for Juju, while also adding a fresh, almost alien sound to the mix. When Island Records released King Sonny Ade's Juju music in 1982, it was the first time many Westerners had Juju music. 
Island Records was seeking for another worldwide celebrity after the death of Bob Marley the previous year. While Ade would never equal Bob Marley's success, Juju Music did introduce many people to African popular music for the first time. Demola's beautiful pedestal was heavily featured on the record. It was his own distinctive style. Demola developed his own method, so it didn't sound anything like a traditional American country pedestal guitar. Please like this video so that others can also find it. Share it on social media too so that many people can learn about Juju music. Thanks. Kira kira, kira kira.